Last time we talked about the pressure gradient force, which is the force that causes the wind to blow. Today we're going to talk about the Coriolis force, which is an apparent force due to the rotating coordinate system, which causes a deflection of the air away from directly a direct thermal circulation from high to low. Um, so this Coriolis force is an apparent force that's only apparent to an observer that happens to be in the rotating reference frame. Uh, <clears throat> it cannot alter the speed of an air parcel, but it can alter its direction. It's uh, strongest at the poles, it's zero at the equator, it acts perpendicular to the velocity vector, and it causes a deflection of the uh, air parcel to the right of the motion in the northern hemisphere and to the left of the velocity vector in the southern hemisphere. The Coriolis force is most noticeable for objects that are moving very fast and for, uh, for uh, motions that are persistent that last for a uh, period for greater than one day. To visualize the Coriolis force, think about being in a spaceship, an observer uh, out away from the planet, maybe in a geostationary satellite, and an object is going to move from the North Pole to the South Pole. Uh, so it moves in this plane from the North Pole to the South Pole, from the observer in space, that's exactly what it does. Uh, but, uh, if this motion is not instantaneous, uh, the Earth underneath is actually rotating. And so from an observer in that rotating coordinate system, it would look like that uh, trajectory was actually traversing uh, not a straight line, but a curved path. And as you move from the North Pole towards the equator, the Earth rotates underneath, giving an apparent deflection to the right. And if you were to move from the south pole towards the equator, as the Earth turns, it would give you an apparent deflection to the left. Another way to think about this is uh, through the conservation of angular momentum. So, uh, you have, if you're at the equator, uh, you have a very long radial arm. And then as you move from the equator towards the pole, that radial arm shrinks. Uh, and conservation of angular momentum would dictate uh, that as that radial arm shrinks, uh, the angular rotation rate actually increases. Uh, so as you move from the equator uh, towards the pole, your angular uh, velocity needs to increase, which would actually cause a deflection uh, in the east uh, direction, uh, which would be to the right of the motion. Uh, you can do the same argument for the southern hemisphere, uh, but it would cause a deflection to the left in the southern hemisphere. The angular rotation rate of our planet uh, is given by 2 pi, which is the radians, uh, the Earth completes an entire circle uh, essentially in one day. And that's not exactly true. Uh, a day is not exactly 24 hours. Uh, and the fact that the Earth is rotating around the sun, the position of the sun in the sky actually changes slightly from day to day. Uh, but it's a pretty good uh, approximation for what we have. Um, 2 pi over 1 day, 1 day is 86,400 seconds, giving you a numeric value of 7.272 times 10 to the minus 5th radians per second. But the angular velocity also has a uh, vector direction. And using the right hand rule, uh, the Earth is spinning, that gives me an uh, angular rotation vector uh, in pointing in this direction, which is actually uh, kind of orthogonal to the plane. Uh, that the Earth is actually, um, I guess it's not true, uh, but it's pointed in the same direction as the North Pole, if you want to think of it that way. Um, so the angular velocity uh, is pointed at the equator, it's actually pointed in the j-hat direction. At the pole, it's pointed in the k-hat direction, because that uh, rotation vector always points in that same direction, and when you're at the equator, uh, that happens to coincide with the positive j-direction. And everywhere in between, uh, it's some combination of uh, in the k-hat direction and the j-hat direction. And the mathematical formulation which can describe that is given here, where the angular velocity is equal to the magnitude of that times cosine of phi in the j-hat direction plus sine of phi in the k-hat direction. And phi, in this case, is latitude. So when the latitude is 0 at the equator, uh, the j-term dominates. It goes to 1. And that's correct over here. And when you're at the pole, uh, the sine phi term dominates. And so all of the angular velocity is in the k-hat direction. 
So mathematically, the Coriolis force is equal to minus 2 omega cross the velocity vector. Uh, you can write this in, in matrix notation, uh, minus 2 omega, and then we put the i, j, and k hat uh, on each of the columns. We have the uh, corresponding uh, components of the angular velocity, 0 in the i hat direction, cosine phi in the j, and sine phi in the k. And then we have the velocity vector components, u, v, and w. So, in order to get the i component of this cross product, you need to actually cross product the j and k. So you take the j, roll it into the k, get the positive i, uh, and so you're essentially doing a cross product here of w times cosine uh, <clears throat> and minus uh, v times sine in the i hat direction. Uh, to get the j hat vector, uh, we need to cross the i and the k columns. Uh, so i cross k will give you minus j. That's why we have the minus term here. Um, and so we do 0 uh, times uh, w uh, minus uh, u times sine of phi. And that's our j hat. In order to get our k hat, we have to cross the i and j. So i cross j gives me positive k. Um, <clears throat> and so that's going to be 0. Uh, times v minus u times cosine phi. If you take this minus sign and distribute it in here, uh, you'll end up with the actual expression for the Coriolis acceleration, which is 2 times the magnitude of the angular velocity, uh, v sine phi minus w cosine phi in the i hat direction, minus the u sine phi in the j hat direction, plus u cosine phi in the k hat direction. And there's another thing that we often do is this uh, 2 omega sine phi shows up in both the horizontal uh, i hat and j hat uh, directions. So we have the definition here of f, um, which is the Coriolis parameter, which is defined as 2 omega sine phi. Uh, and we'll often use that nomenclature when we're talking about the Coriolis force. The Coriolis parameter, uh, you can see uh, when you uh, put in zero for the latitude, sine phi goes to zero. Uh, the Coriolis parameter goes to zero at the equator uh, and will go to its largest value at the poles.